Today is all about the analysis and the final verdict of what it takes to become successful. How to become a successful creator online. Honestly, I think we all secretly want to move out of our house, go to LA, be a creator, and say fuck you to the people who didn't believe us in high school. Now here's the thing, you guys. There's a lot of things YouTubers cut out of their videos that you don't see. Literally, there's so much shit in the background that I just had to crop out so you guys don't give me crap for it. Anyways, going back to my point. The real question is, what does it truly take to become successful? How to monetize your passion? To be honest, I have no fucking idea. There's just something about these tips and tricks that aren't enough. There's a missing variable that we need to find that's beyond a strategy. That's why you guys saw in my last episode, I was interviewing a YouTuber, an entrepreneur, just people who are successful. They have had millions and millions of views. And I just want to know what it really took to get there. You guys can check the video. It'll be linked down below. However, today is the analysis. We're going to finalize and answer this important burning question. And we're all going to do that in today's video. All I got to do is keep on watching. But before we do, I'm going to go grab my business jacket and we're going to take a ride because before we even answer this question, I think we need some coffee. Okay, here you guys. So something you should know if you're new to this channel, my name is Jade. I'm an entrepreneur who helps you grow on social media. And something that I forgot to clear up is I run and live on caffeine. So it wouldn't be right for me this video if to not strap up, get some coffee with you guys, and take you guys along this journey. Because I just don't want this 10, 15 minutes of us kind of chatting to be not transformational. You know what, at the end of this video, you're gonna be fucking shook to the core. And I thought it'd be fun to kind of drive around LA first, Grab the coffee and then chit chat about what you're missing to grow on social. Yo, what's up guys, Narrator here. Do you live in Los Angeles, California and are you free October 20th, 3 to 5 p.m.? Well, if you answered yes to both of these questions, do we have an exclusive invite just for you? PBJ is hosting an event called Swipe Up LA and you're invited. What is Swipe Up LA you may ask? Well this event is meant for creators and influencers to learn how to grow or expand their brand. Also you get a chance to meet with fellow creators. So if that sounds like something you want to do, make sure to hit that link in the description. Alright, back to you Jade. Okay, something you should know too is I'm currently in LA and I moved out at the age of 17 because my parents were lovely but I just couldn't make videos in my room and I've become a pro driver except today so we're gonna see oh god okay 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 go go bitch go go I can't even turn left uh... in 900 feet turn left we're going to Alfred's tea room if you've never been there neither have I I've heard so many good things about this tea shop there's matcha there's coffee and it's one of those LA places that's super quirky and cute fun and fresh right funny story actually one of my most viral videos on this channel was just me driving around to chatting about Instagram like I should I feel like I should bring the series back also this is getting really hot in LA like what am I doing with this jacket I try to be all business like <laughs> What's the number one thing that prevents people from being successful? If you want to drop out of school, move to LA, and then say fuck you to the people who hate you, I've realized that I've actually moderately done that and not in a cocky way. Because here's the thing, if you told me that a year ago that I would move out and do my own thing, I would not believe you. I'd be like, who paid you to say that? But now that I've done it, it's surreal to me how this journey can be so unpredictable sometimes and I don't even realize it. A lot of you guys want to know, how long will it take Use me to- Use the right lane to turn left. A lot of you guys ask me, hey Jade, how long will it take me to blow up and be successful because I don't want to take a risk. When I think about my journey, I had no fucking idea what I was doing. When I was making YouTube videos, no one believed in me and I literally had no idea where I was going. That's why I wanted to make this series so you guys can actually feel comfortable with being uncomfortable and you know I'm about to break down what you need to grow but at the same time I want to be okay with us kind of getting on a risky level right we're not gonna play it safe if you want to be successful a youtuber you got to make decisions that are creative but also risky that might not end up where you want to be so if that's cool with you and I'm cool with that I think we're gonna dive right in so what does it take to become a successful creator let's start off with what it's not about I think the obvious one is first 
having the best equipment. I wanna clear something up. You do not need a $4,000 camera to make quality content. This right here is something I found in my garage I'm currently recording on. Now, it doesn't mean that you don't have to put effort in your content, you don't have to edit like crazy, have nights where you're, oh, gotta, gotta go, bitch. No, I mean, here's the thing. If you guys saw in the last episode, Ryan is a YouTuber that I honestly respect. I've seen that kid retake the same shot over and over again just to make it perfect. And no one ever sees those outtakes because on editing, you can just crop it all out. So let's dive in here. I think something I want to clear up is please don't think you turn need to- Turn left onto North La Brea Avenue, then turn right onto Hollywood Boulevard. Please don't think you need to go out there and wait until you get the most expensive equipment to start your channel, to start your content. No, use your iPhone iMovie's great, but put an effort on the outtakes you want to see. I think the number one thing is like, if you don't have the resources, be resourceful. I'm also going to quote my friend Brennan, who I interviewed, and said clearly that people think their lifestyle needs to be millions and millions of dollars. You can live happily under a thousand dollars a month. You don't need to go out there, quit your job, and move to the nicest part of town. Be okay with being humble and live under circumstances to sacrifice for what you need. For example, I just feel like people look at my life especially and think, you need hundreds and millions of dollars to live alone. You have to understand, I moved out with $3,000 in the bank. Yes, that's a lot of money. I worked for that. That's not a lot compared to everyone else here in LA. And it gets very easy to compare yourself, but I'm telling you, if you are able to live on the bare minimum, you can actually do a lot. You just gotta be smart with your money and be resourceful. Okay, time to get out. So I'm on Melrose Avenue. Look at my parking, you guys. I'm not gonna get towed away this time because we're paying for my meter. Okay, time to order my coffee. You guys know that essential on camera, especially to be energetic. All right, as I was saying, number two, what else is it required to be a YouTuber? I think one of the biggest myths, surprisingly, is do you have to be annoying on camera? No, I really don't believe you don't have to be anything you're not. However, might I add, it is so important that if you can be the most exaggerated, best version of yourself, that will help you become a better creator. I think, honestly, do I talk like this every single day? No. And to be honest, I'm feeling really tired, which is why I actually get a lot of caffeinated drinks. I'm also going to quote my friend Haley. She says sometimes when she's tired and she needs to film a video, she'll have to go out of her way just to take caffeinated drinks just to make content more interesting. Nobody's going to fucking watch you if you're boring. So we're actually at All Parts right now, and I'm going to see what I ordered and let's see if I change or become a lot more entertaining after I get my drink. Ah! Hi! Wow. Can I please get a ice cream tea matcha latte uh, with almond milk, please? Yeah. Okay, guys, are you kidding me? Stop, please, I'm recording a YouTube video, very important. Okay, guys, so I ordered a green tea matcha latte with double scoop matcha and almond milk. Let's do a taste test. I've actually never tried Alfred's before. I'm actually really disappointed, and I'll tell you why after I take an Instagram photo because this was eight dollars, not gonna lie, quite angry right now. Okay, guys, so I'm back, and this is what we got. To be honest, I'm literally so jittery, and I didn't eat this, and it's not that good tasting, but I feel a lot better. Something that I don't really tell anyone actually on my channel is sometimes I just don't feel like filming a YouTube video, but I have to, and I know that it's good for my brand, so sometimes I do have to force my energy. Like, a lot of you guys want to know, like, how are you always energetic on camera? I'm telling you, I'm not like this 24-7, especially right now, though. There are times where I know I don't feel like it, but I know what I want to do and I'm ambitious, so I just do it anyways, and that's where caffeinated drinks come in handy. So, let's be honest here. I think Haley, I'm going to call Haley on this. So, Haley told me she actually drinks a lot of caffeinated beverages before filming videos if she's not feeling it. And you know what? That's valid. So do I. I actually didn't really need this today. This is a super bad idea, but I think a lot of you guys want to know if you need to be super loud. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying be yourself, but the exaggerated version. I don't necessarily think people should start enunciating every single syllable like crazy. I just think you got to be yourself, but um, I don't know what I'm promoting here, to be honest. I hope you guys don't take this the wrong way, but I'm just saying I am like this on camera. It's not going to lie to you guys. I just don't want to bullshit you guys. I think YouTubers can admit that we do everything it takes to become the best, most exaggerated version of ourselves, because if you're tired, if you're boring, no one's going to fucking watch that. And like what Ryan said earlier, it's super competitive these days. You can't just be like, hey, what's up, you guys? Like, there is so much competition out there. You're basically bidding for a slot of 10 minutes of attention, and your audience needs to be captivated or else you're not gonna hit the market. You know, knowing that, it's stressful, but I think there are ways to kind of go about that and solve it. And for me, it's a matcha green tea latte, but you guys comment below what you guys drink. I'm literally so jittery. <laughs> the last myth we're gonna bust is 
that you need to hit a milestone in order to become successful. A lot of you guys actually think that once you hit 10,000, you'll be rich and happy. Once you hit 100,000, you'll be rich and happy. But weirdly enough, I actually interviewed my friends. For Ryan, it might be 20,000. For Haley, you just might be having a notebook. For Brendan, it might just be having taxes to do and feeling like there's a team around you. Like, I can speak for example too. To be honest, you guys, when I was first starting my channel, it did not hit me that I had an audience till people started coming up to me in real life. Like, I don't know why, but like the number on the screen, like that's a, like 100,000, just didn't really occur to me that I had people actually listening to me. I think so often we put a set number of milestone and we say, if we can reach this, I'll be happy. Now, I do think it's a good idea to set goals, but the numbers that you guys are setting for yourselves are bullshit KPI. What a KPI is, is a key performance index, what you measure success upon. A lot of businesses use this term, and I love using this too, because if you're setting bullshit KPIs, like, let me just hit 10, 100 views, 200, you know what I mean? Like, those are numbers that define your identity, and it immediately could hurt you. So, the biggest myth I want to say is, maybe your head is thinking, once I hit 100K, I'll be happy. Weirdly enough, once you hit it, you're going to still feel the exact same. This is going to be time after time. All my friends or creators that do this shit always run to this roadblock where once I hit something, they're not enough. It's not enough, and they keep going, and soon, it can actually get really depressing, not gonna lie. Like, you start hitting milestones, one after another, and you're like, what's the fucking point? So the whole thing about this, you guys, is know who you are, and start basing your success off maybe more valuable numbers. Instead of you basing your success upon how many impressions or views can I get, maybe you're gonna ask yourself, how many engaged fans do I have? How many people am I helping? And at the end of the day, it's more fulfilling to use numbers that are valuable to you. I'm about to go home, kind of chill out because this is so much <laughs> caffeine. Um, I shouldn't probably get us extra shot of matcha. I'm gonna head back home, recalibrate, and finally answer your question, which is, what does it truly take to become a successful creator? Stay tuned. Okay. Listen, I just want to talk one-on-one -on -one with you guys. I feel like I try to make this video time to time, and I don't know if you guys have been there, but you turn on the camera, you try to speak, but you just hate the sound of your voice. You just can't seem to get it right. And I'm telling you, I've been there. I know I'm comfortable talking to you guys, but it's just not always been like that. And I feel like you really want to see, you guys can scroll through my very first YouTube videos. I was hella awkward. Um, and I just feel like the number one thing, you know, to answer this question, what does it truly take to become a successful creator? I believe it's this. There are just other people out there that have something called grit. Great, now you can click off this video and never hear this again. I know, I know how this works. You guys get value, but you never implement. Now listen to me for just a few minutes, okay? I just wanted to make this whole series for the sole reason to help that person out there who's watching this video right now, who doesn't feel like this is, a career. I'm telling you, if you asked me that like 10 years ago, this YouTube thing was probably not a legitimate job, but now you can actually monetize your passion. Now, let me tell you. So what I mean by the word grit, right? Grit stands for doing something even if you don't feel like it. There's just something with all these successful creators out there. The one thing that we all have in common, that we all create content, yes, I believe we all have something great in common. We create content that we love. But the one thing that differentiates us from successful people to the people who are doing it for fun, which is totally fine, but as long as you want this to take a legitimate career, the difference between an amateur and a pro is something where they are uncertain about their career, they are uncertain about something, they don't know what's gonna happen, but they still take action. I have seen this time and time again with successful entrepreneurs and especially creators, like, the people that are really doing and killing it on the internet aren't the people that have the best equipment. It's not the people that speak the loudest that they're most talented. And it's definitely not the people who already have millions of followers. It's the creators out there that don't know the fucking outcome they want to go for. They acknowledge that they have fears, they acknowledge that they're not the best at the camera, but they still proceed. And even though it hurts them, they sacrifice everything just to make their career happen. These are the people with grit. And I'm talking about moments where I find myself stuttering, but I still proceed. I, I don't understand it with you guys. Either once they feel a legitimate sense of weakness or panicking, they just quit. You guys turn on the camera, no views, you stop. That's not how it fucking works. If you really want to take this to a career, the number one differentiation is even with uncertainty, they still make progress because they are willing to put in the work and patience even if it sucks in the beginning. I'm telling you, I would double down on someone. It's not on talent. It's not on how loud someone is. It's just they double down on being themselves. And even if it's not working, they push through. I'm gonna go back again. I'm gonna go back here again. A lot of you out there have so many voices around. There's so much noise. You're listening to other people's opinion. 
cool. But the successful people are able to lock themselves in a room, don't give a shit about people's opinion, just to focus on the vision. I call it being tunnel vision, right? Like you just want to go, you, there's nothing stopping you. I would say like driving like a fucking car and if you hit a wall, you just go through it, right? I mean, honestly, there's a balance. And I think you guys saw earlier, the first part of the series, I was talking about sociopath behavior disorders. We're not fucking perfect. The thing I just want to make clear is you don't need to be a certain personality. You don't need to be this. You don't need the best equipment. You don't need anything. All you gotta do is look within yourself, with rip yourself apart, and listen to your own voice. I know, it's really fucking weird. I believe we all read so many fucking books, we read so many tutorials. How about you read your own fucking book? I mean, like, honestly, I know I'm cursing a lot, and I'm super passionate about this. It's because I am telling you, if you listen to me right now, and actually take a moment to be okay with a little bit of pain, a little bit of hate comments, a little bit of this, you will find success that's so much more rewarding beyond the views and followers. I'm sick and tired of people saying, Jade, how many likes can I get to be happy? You don't need that to be happy. You have everything you need. And actually, I just want to thank the person out there who actually really helped me with this is my dad. Thank you so Hello, dad. How are you? I'm not a child who got a business handed to them by their parents. That's not the fucking case, okay? Don't get that shit mixed up. I was a child that was lucky enough to have parents that believed in me. And I'm so blessed and I know that's not for everyone. And I want to thank God for that. I just know the one thing that I just wish I could give to everyone is that moment my dad told me, you have everything you need. And I was someone that used to complain of how my fucking G7X YouTube camera was not good enough. I needed the Sony A7. I put all these excuses. If only I can get this. If only I could, you know, be less talkative. People hate the sound of my voice at school. You know, if only I knew that earlier, I probably wouldn't have quit my YouTube channel. And you guys know this, but I never talked about this before. Before this channel even existed, I had four other channels and I gave up too early. I, I knew deep down if I kept going with my doll channel, which is the first channel I started in 2009, I probably would have had gotten so much success. However, I believe everything happens for a reason and I just don't want someone out there watching this video to feel like they have a channel and they're on the brink of success but they're about to give up and I want to re-encourage you that it's okay to fuck up, it's okay to, you know, pivot your content all over again, it's okay to get yelled at. I mean, like, honestly, I've done so much just to kind of be in line with my vision. All you need is the ability to say, I accept where I'm at, it's kind of shitty, but I'm gonna keep going. And I know this is super cliche, and I just wanna summarize this video with one thing only. Be resourceful, be yourself, and focus on the vision, not the numbers. I'm telling you, focus on your dream. And that's what today's video is all about. All right, you guys, I hope you enjoyed this series. I'm gonna close it off and let you know how thankful I am for your attention. It means the complete world. If you like this video, like it, thumbs up, comment below, and I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm planning so much for this channel, and I know if you enjoy this video, you'll love the rest. So make sure you turn on post notifications. I fucking love you. You're the best. I want to know your thoughts. And shout out to the comment winner. Shout out to the comment winner. Comment on this post to be featured in the next episode. If you want to be the next comment winner, comment below. I'm honestly so sorry if anyone got offended of me screaming. I had way too much matcha. I'm jittering. I'm super jittery. I love you guys so much. Self plug. Uh, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. Follow me on Snapchat. Follow me on MySpace. What? Catch you guys in the next one. Goodbye.